the 22nd day of Advent, December 20th. Today, you and I, my friends of Christ, we cross a bridge. We have listened for the past 21 days of accounts and prophecies and foreshadowings, if you will, of the Christ to come. And that was from the Hebrew Scriptures, what we call the Old Testament. But today, you and I, for the first time with our Jesse tree, we cross over, we take a bridge from the Old Testament into the New, and we meet the two individuals who are themselves that very bridge, Zechariah and Elizabeth, who we will hear today will bear a son, surprising to both of them, because as we also will hear, Elizabeth has been barren, and they are both very old. Let's listen, though, to what happens to Zechariah and to Elizabeth. This is Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 25. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now, while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of his priesthood, it fell to him by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord, and he shall drink no wine nor strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel, who stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things come to pass because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they wondered at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he made signs to them and remained mute. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she hid herself, saying, Thus the Lord has done to me in the days when he looked on me, to take away my reproach among men. This beautiful account of Zechariah and Elizabeth should remind us of another account of a couple advanced in years, of a wife who had been barren, and therefore of this husband and wife, who had remained childless until God intervened and came into their life, revealed himself and his glory to them, and said to the man, you look at the stars, can you count them? I will make your descendants as numerous as these. That is after God had made a covenant with Abram, whom he later names Abraham. Abram's wife, Sarai, 
had been sterile, barren, much to her shame. They had no heir. They had no children. Until God said to Abram, you will have a son. Your wife will bear a son. Sarai didn't believe. And she laughed, in fact, at it, because she said, how can I, an old, withered woman, barren, conceive? And God reveals to her that she will, and that the child's name will be Isaac, because it means he laughed. Named after his mother's doubtful and skeptical reaction to God's prophecy and promise. Now, we might think to ourselves, why is the angel of the Lord so very harsh to Zechariah? I mean, wouldn't it be natural to think? How could it possibly be that a man advanced in years and a woman who had been known to be barren and sterile for quite some time, how all of a sudden shall it be that that they will conceive, that she will conceive, and that they will have a son. Let's remember, please, my dear friends of Christ, what Zechariah is doing at the very moment that the angel of the Lord, Gabriel, comes to him. He is in the inner sanctum, Zechariah. He's in the Holy of Holies. It's his duty by lot, as high priest, to go in and to present the offerings to the Lord. And he stays there, presenting these offerings in the Holy of Holies, in which no one was able to go in except the one designated by Lot to enter. And so that in itself is a wondrous and all-filled privilege. It should be no surprise that some sort of apparition might occur. Some sort of miracle might occur. But even more importantly, remember, Zechariah is a priest who should be well-versed in the sacred scripture of his people, who should also clearly remember the very beginnings of the covenant people God has chosen, beginning with Abram, the father of Judaism. That Zechariah does not recall what was made possible by God for Abram and Sarai, Abraham and Sarah, indicates that even though he did follow all the commandments and all the ordinances of the Lord, he still not have, did not have the fullness of faith. He still, not, he still did not have that absolute conviction that with God all things are possible. It is faulted to Zechariah because as priest and as priest of God, he failed to believe that God could do anything, anything for the good, especially anything that would bring the salvation of his people. That salvation that Zechariah and all of Israel had been longing for. Saints in the making, as you contemplate on this, our Jesse tree uh, account for today, and as you and I hang this new ornament on the Jesse tree, hands in prayer, Zechariah and Elizabeth, let's call to mind that all things are possible to God. And therefore, all things are possible to you and me when you and I have faith in God. How do you and I have faith in God? How can we allow anything to be possible through God's love? You and I, we have to make space for grace. 